everyone. It's my great honor to be here to share what we have done on the ammonia emission or cost-benefit way priority for uh, cleaner air. And uh, the reason why we need to reduce nitrogen pollution, actually nitrogen has a great contribution to human health because we use nitrogen fertilizer. Actually, nitrogen fertilizer feed half of global population. So it's very important we, we need nitrogen. But if excessive nitrogen loss to the environment were leading to many damages, such as they will reduce biodiversity. Large amount of biodiversity reduce losses are due to nitrogen pollution to the uh, uh, forest, to the grassland. And then meanwhile, lots of uh, nitrous oxide emission to the air will lead to global warming. One molecular of nitrogen oxide have equal to 300 times of uh, carbon dioxide. It's a strong greenhouse gases. And uh, meanwhile, we see that nitrogen loss to the air, ammonia, nitrogen oxide will lead to air pollution. This very strong negative contribution to our uh, human houses. So currently, air pollution is the number four largest damage to human health, is the number one largest damage of uh, environmental impact on human health. Millions of people die each year due to air pollution. So we need to know how nitrogen contribute to air pollution. And uh, actually, we can reduce PM2.5 pollution through reduce nitrogen emission. PM2.5 is a compound with many precursors, including sulfur dioxide, ammonia, nitrogen, nitrogen oxides, and other pollutants. And we, if uh, currently majority of the PM2.5 is from the secondary, not from the uh, uh, primary sources. So if you want to reduce the secondary PM2.5 pollution, we need to reduce the precursors. And the ammonia and the nitrogen oxides are important precursors to PM2.5. And uh, so which one is, is bigger? We need to know if we want to reduce PM2.5, which one contribute larger to PM2.5? That's the question we need to answer. And uh, we develop a new index we call N-share. We need to understand the contribution of nitrogen to air pollution. If you look at the map, you can see in Europe, around 80%, sometimes some places, over 80% of the air pollution are due to nitrogen emission. Why such kind of situation? Because we have a reduced sulfur dioxide emission for over several decades. So we have a great uh, contribution on sulfur dioxide reduction. And the next step, we need to move to nitrogen and move to ammonia, move to nitrogen oxide. But in other developing regions, we can see that the nitrogen contributes a slightly lower share due to the still the sulfur dioxide has a larger contribution there. They need to work on sulfur dioxide. And we look into, into the two species ammonia and the nitrogen oxides, we will see that ammonia actually have a larger contribution. This is a surprising. We, we always, because ammonia is from agriculture, majority of ammonia is from agriculture, and the nitrogen oxide are from industry sources. We, we always thinking that, okay, the air pollution in cities are mainly due to industry sources, due to vehicles. We never thinking that, okay, the air pollution in cities, part of them are due to ammonia from agricultural sources far away from urban area. So this is a very new thinking and new findings. We need to look into nitrogen, especially in the region where nitrogen oxide have been reduced for several decades. If, why the ammonia have a larger contribution than Europe? You will see that actually Europe have reduced nitrogen oxide also for over several decades but ammonia still have a larger contribution. And the similar thing occurs in US and in China. So when, you, when we look into the actual numbers, we will see currently nitrogen contribute to around 40% of uh, PM2.5, and it increased from 1990s to currently. And uh, uh, meanwhile, they're leading to uh, many, a large amount of premature deaths. If we converted the premature deaths to human health damage, really economic damage, 
or large number, 40, 420 billion US dollars per year due to nitrogen emission to the air. And when we look at different species, ammonia have a larger contribution compared to nitrogen oxides. This is very important. This is a key message we need to know. We need to put ammonia on the mitigation list. We not only focus on nitrogen oxides in cities, we need to look, at, look into agricultural se sectors. So this is a, when we uh, look into the reduction, we need to strategies. We compare the implementation cost. If we reduce ammonia emission, how much money it will cost? and what's the benefit to human health. You will see that for ammonia mitigation, the cost is far low compared to its benefit. But when you look into NOx, the implementation cost is higher compared to its benefit. That means it's time to switching nitrogen oxide reduction to ammonia. This is a, our, our future. This is very important. Why such kind of situation? Actually, we know that the implementation cost to reduce any kind of a pollutant is increasing curve with if you have a large amount of a, a pollutant that need to reduce. Since we have reduced nitrogen oxide for over several decades, the price has going up dramatically. But if you look into ammonia, we do nothing about ammonia. Ammonia just there in the US, they don't have measures to control ammonia. In China, we don't have a, a strongly national measures we need to control ammonia. So ammonia is just there. When we start to reduce ammonia, it's a very low price at the very beginning. It will go up if we reduce maybe half or 70% of ammonia. The price will also go going up. But currently, the ammonia reduction is much cheaper compared to NOx, but its benefits are larger than NOx. That's the information, that's the message I want to deliver to all the countries, all the policymakers and our public. We need to take care, we need to know that we need to reduce ammonia. And where ammonia came from? Ammonia mainly, majority of ammonia came from agriculture, from cropland, from natural fertilizer use, from manure management. So, we need to change our diet. Paul already showed we need to change dietary. If we change dietary, we can reduce ammonia emission from livestock production. We can also reduce ammonia from crop production. And meanwhile, currently, over, over half of nitrogen fertilizer applied to the field, lost to the environment. So we need to increase the nitrogen fertilizer use efficiency on cropland. This is very important. And Finally, we need to recycle our manure. Currently, the manure recycle rate is less than 40%, actually. Majority of the manure we produce lost to the environment, and the majority of the manure lost to the environment are lost as ammonia. So the air, especially the air dry process of manure, lost a large amount of ammonia to the air. We need to change that. That's the key message, I think we need to know for agriculture. And also we have uh, ammonia from industry sources, from uh, landfill, from wastewater treatment. This is what we call non-agricultural sources. Non-agricultural sources currently contribute about less than 20%, but they also have contributions. We need to look into that also. So for our next step, actually we believe nitrogen is a very important element to human health to earth system, since they have a strong contribution to human food security issues, and they have a strong negative impact on our environment, on our climate, on human health. So we need to look into more details of nitrogen and see their contribution to future sustainable development goals. This is very important. And meanwhile, nitrogen cycle will change if we look into the interaction of a nitrogen cycle and climate change. If the, 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 the global warming will increase ammonia emissions, since ammonia is very sensitive to the temperature. And the meanwhile, the change of precipitation will also change ammonia emission. So we needed to understand how future the extreme weather will contribute to ammonia emission. 
will contribute to our human health. So that's our next step to see if we want to build a, a, a future, a better future for Earth system, a better future for human, we need to see their interactions. Thank you very much. And, uh, I also want to thank my, one of my courses here, Lin from Peking University. Could you? Yes, and he uh, <laughs> did a do great job on the atmosphere chemistry modeling. Thank you very much. Well, you made an incredibly compelling case there for the reduction of yeah. ammonia. Yeah. Uh, fantastic, really yeah. good presentation. Yeah. So you talked about ways to reduce ammonia emissions from agriculture, and you touched on some of the other sectors. What, what kind of new practices and new technologies might you need to address some of those other sectors? I think uh, for the non-agricultural sectors, including the uh, ammonia industries, so we need new protocols to reduce ammonia emission when you produce fertilizers. And uh, uh, that's the, the update of the industry processes. And the meanwhile, currently we use landfill. Landfill uh, is effectively food waste. And when the food waste go to landfill, ammonia is come out. So we need to change that. Currently in China, we already, or we already change. We move food waste to uh, 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 to produce livestock feed, not just go to landfill. We're trying to recycle the nutrient mm -hmm. in the food waste. This is very important for the recycle. And uh, meanwhile, in wastewater treatment, currently the wastewater treatment plant, you, you pump the air into the wastewater, you're trying to emit the uh, CO2, but also you will increase ammonia emission. So we need to care about if we pump air into the wastewater treatment to increase the ammonia emission. And the meanwhile, part of the ammonia can come from car driving, the gasoline burning. If we, if, when we want to reduce nitrogen oxide from the car driving, we easily over reduce nitrogen from nitrogen oxide to ammonia. So we need to take care of that process to reduce ammonia emission to, from car driving. Thank you. Bao Zheng Q, a man on an ammonia reduction mission. Thank you so much. Thank you